accountants for construction and their important facts. Whether you are a builder, roofer, plumber, electrician or engaged in the trade industry, construction accounting is often the last and least of your concerns. However, taking control of your finances and books is just as important as taking on more work to grow your business. Here are 10 key insights accountants for construction want you to know. First one on the list, the ideal structure differs for every business. Not all the businesses in the construction industry are the same. Some focus on building while others specialize in plumbing, electrical works and roofing. There are circumstances particular to yours uh, dictate how you should structure your business. For instance, if you have big projects, it may be better to set up your business as a limited company instead of a sole trader or partnership. Talk to a team of accountants for construction from Sterling's Global to know what suits your best. Secondly, estimate projects correctly. The first step in managing finances is to grasp project costing Regardless of your usual contract size, you must have a solid understanding of how much you should quote a job. Learn to break down a project's materials, labor, and other overhead costs. Be detailed in doing this so you can arrive at an accurate break-even figure. Before sending out a quote, don't forget to have allowances for any unforeseen expenses from delays and oversights. Once you have got the hang of estimation, the next point is also necessary. So third point on the list is project management is crucial. Experienced contractors and subcontractors will tell you that construction works rarely go according to plan. Despite extensive preparations, jobs sometimes require calibration or revision as they progress, negatively impacting cost and profits. Control cost by slaying on top of ongoing projects with detailed timelines and budget schedules. It is best to anticipate or address any deviations and delays early on to prevent them from snowballing. Number four, keep a close eye on your margins. Revenues shouldn't be your only measures of success. Simply because you have more work doesn't mean you are earning well. Accountants for construction will tell you that gross profit and margins are better gauge of financial performance. These figures show how much you have earned on a contract given the cost incurred for rendering the services. For example, a £400 project requires £300 labour and materials resulting in a £100 profit. And gross profit margin, which is the GPM, of 25%, which is the £100 out of the £400. If that's an accurate, acceptable rate, aim to maintain it for every job and monitor it regularly throughout a project's life cycle. Besides margins, you also need to avoid the cash flow pitfalls, which is our fifth point. In the construction business, tracking the Movement of your funds can be complicated. For instance, with progress billing, you only get paid for the percentage of work completed. Even with cash expected to come in, you may still have insufficient funds to purchase materials. Balancing your business's cash flow is necessary to ensure you're not cash strapped at any point in your operations. Rein in your 
receivables by regularly invoicing your clients. For those that cannot pay on time, stop work to prevent money from being tied up further in the project. Asking for a down payment is common, especially when the work requires costly materials. Sixth, there are four construction accounting methods. To address challenges in accounting, construction businesses often utilize more than one accounting method for every project. As a contractor, you must understand the key differences between each. The cash basis method recognizes revenue upon cash collection and expenses with money spent. On the other hand, the accrual method records revenue when earned and expenses upon incurring without considering when money changes hands. Besides cash and accrual basis, there are two more methods. Percentage of completion, which is called PCM and completed contract CCM. With PCM, revenue and expenses are apportioned based on the project's progress. CCM only recognizes a project's financial activity upon its completion. Each accounting method will impact revenues, expenses and tax due. Most companies use a combination of two or all four. There's a seventh fact applies to all UK companies. Compliance is really tricky. Legislative accounting requirements in the UK are constantly changing and keeping up with changes is something you may have overlooked because of your workload. However, that's often not a reasonable excuse to waive charges. Many accountants for construction will tell you that estimating your obligations to the HMRC is confusing and mistakes on VAT, corporation tax and CIS can be expensive. Right, so here's number eight. Be aware of the CIS trap. Under the construction industry scheme, which is the CIS, contractors must withhold a certain percentage of payments to their subcontractors and remit these to HMRC. These deductions are considered advance payments towards a subcontractor's taxes and national insurance contributions. The deduction rate is 20%, but it increases to 30% if a subcontractor is unregistered for CIS. If you are a contractor, consider registering as a subcontractor in case you take on a project as one. The CIS registration process depends on your business structure. Some additional CIS measures are put in place or revised occasionally, calculating the deductions and filing returns with the HMRC can be complicated. Let an accountant handle it to avoid the pitfalls. When we are on the subject of taxes, here is our ninth fact. Know the VAT reverse charge. In addition to CIS, those in construction have to deal with the VAT domestic reverse charge. The scheme and extension of CIS was introduced to change the handling of VAT for certain construction industry services and building materials. It applies to transactions between VAT registered contractors and subcontractors. Instead of subcontractors accounting for VAT in their invoices, the contractors will settle that VAT directly to HMRC. This change was made to minimize fraud as VAT registered construction businesses charged for VAT but never remitted the amount. Lastly, and the final one is the it's better to work with a professional. The nature of businesses in the construction industry creates complex accounting and tax management issues. Different contract terms, project-based revenues and costing, and varying project timelines make it difficult for contractors to keep up with accounting. Delays in managing accounts can impact your finances. 
While it pays to know the basics, it's more efficient and cost effective to outsource the heavy lifting to a team of accountants for construction. Since they specialize in this practice area, they are well versed in the industry's unique accounting rules for taxation and reporting. Few can ask questions on construction accounting. So number one is, can I use cash basis accounting for my business? The answer to that is it completely depends. If you are VAT registered and have an income of 150K or less, you can recognize revenues and expenses through the cash basis method. To date, it is only allowed for sole traders and partnerships and not limited companies. Always check the HMRC website for updated guidelines. Second question is, should I hire a bookkeeper instead of an accountant to maintain accounts? The answer to that is, you should, but only if you have an excellent grasp of accounting and tax management. It is understandable that you want to be cost efficient in running your business. However, going without a dedicated accountant for construction may cost you more in the long run. Higher HMRC obligations and hefty fines are avoidable expenses with a specialist on board. To be honest, it doesn't really cost a lot more money and someone like ourselves, Sterling's Global, we include the bookkeeping and the services for the accounting together so you don't have to do any of it yourself. Is my business covered by CIS even if I don't build structures? According to HMRC, CIS and encompasses most construction work. There are exceptions such as architecture and surveying, scaffolding metal rental, carpet fitting, materials delivery, and unrelated work on construction site. So even if you are a self-employed plumber, electrician, or roofer, you are still covered by CIS guidelines. Thanks for watching our video, and we hope those 10 key insights has helped you if you want to learn more. Please like, follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Catch you on the next one.